I want to become a scientist. I don't sit among people who do entertainment. There are a lot of people in the UK who wouldn't want to raise their kids in the US because of how they think the culture in the US is. In as much as you want your environment to influence you, you should also be an influence to your environment. Yeah. You understand? Because you are part of another person's environment. So the exactly. person also expects you to be a positive impact. Yeah. Hello guys, welcome to yet another exciting episode on your favorite podcast in the whole wide world. This is the FNF Catcher Dialogues. Thank you so much for coming back to see us today. If it's the first time you're watching us, please do well to subscribe and to our returning subscribers. Super thankful to have you here. My guy. Brother. What's up? Are they okay? Are you sure you're okay? Oh yeah, Charlie. You're on leave, so you're okay. I could do well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Something has got me thinking recently, mm -hmm. and I think it's worth discussing with our audience, and it's got to do with our environment. Yeah. And if I say environment, I'm basically talking about our surrounding, where we grew up, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. How influential is it? Well, uh, our environment. So let's put it into this context, yeah. right? Someone who grew up in a slum. Mm -hmm. and then someone who grew up among let's say i wouldn't say let me choose my words carefully so someone who grew up in a neighborhood where all the children are going to school all the children are like everyone is well catered for parents are there with them they, they give them their needs they are not going wayward they are adulthood you see a dramatic different like you you see a significant difference between those two people right they are children that grew up from very poor backgrounds who end up becoming like children who grew up in good neighborhoods but that is just a handful mm. all right now that's a saying that when you are surrounded by five fools you become the sixth the fool. Sixth fool, yeah and then when you are surrounded by five wise people you become the set wise person right now why why is this quote or why is this significant now you are you are mentored or you are shaped by people around you unconsciously yeah your friends your parents your parents train you in the way that they know best yeah right so they've they've grew up in um a very poor background they, they've grew up in a neighborhood where everybody smokes everybody drinks Probably they wake up and they go and sit in the beer bar. Mm -hmm. Your parents' friends are the same. Yeah. Your neighbors do the same. Their kids end up being the same. You wouldn't be any different. Yeah. Right? But when you grow up in a home where sometimes the parents are poor, but the children there, everyone is going to school. Everyone is learning. They meet to have group discussions. They when when I was a child, right, in our house, most of the parents there weren't as educated. But then they force their, their their children to come together. So sometimes I teach my friends. It was a compound house, yeah. probably about um, 10 different families. But we meet, we learn. Then the parents buy us gifts. We mark, we set questions for ourselves. We, so everybody was progressing. Even the, the, the one who was most dull among us began to pick up academically. So we, we shape each other by the, the surrounding we find ourselves in. And I think, yeah. Our, our environment plays a very big role. Yeah, I completely yeah. agree with you. And with when you were talking about um, the the friends that you grew up with and those who were quote unquote not so good academically, mm -hmm. all of a sudden picking up, it tells you how important these things are. Yeah, you know, we, I think uh, in one of our previous episodes we spoke about how parents are influential in the decision making of um, when it comes to career advice and yeah. the schools that their children attend and mm -hmm. all that. And I think we've also talked about friends and the mm -hmm. kind of company you mm -hmm. grew, you grow up in. Mm -hmm. You you talked about the fact that um, when you're growing up, if you grow uh, if you grow up in a neighborhood where everyone is going to school and all that, chances are you'd come out successful yeah. in something. Yeah. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Then we move on from your immediate surrounding. That's your family, your neighborhood, too, because you realize that. People have a very promising start when they're young. Mm -hmm. And then as they grow, 
they turn out to be something else and you're yeah. like oh but how did this happen yeah. how did this happen mm -hmm. and now the environment which has kind of breeds this kind of behavior is now friends yeah. do you get it so it's it's incredible how we don't take note of these things and for example take someone who grew up in in the uk take someone who grew up in ghana or mm -hmm. in an african country and all that there is that difference that is immediately obvious mm -hmm. in, in the way they articulate themselves and the things they've been exposed to and yeah. so on and so forth yeah i think before we sat here we were talking about the fact that when we came in there some things that they talk about and we're like completely ignorant no like yeah. so naive and it's it's fascinating how we ignore these little things and how so, much they affect us you, you know when when we are young right there are things that are not within our control mm. your parents control where you live yeah. so you you can't change where your house is <laughs> because you have no money to rent for yourself yeah. right so then you you are likely to succumb to the circumstances around mm -hmm. there are children who are like myself i was very quiet yeah. so i didn't have too many friends when i was very young i was very shy so i do play with other kids but most times i'm with my parents and my dad is the one who forced you to learn he wants to see you coming on top of your class mm -hmm. even if you are second you you have to explain why so <laughs> it, it can be a place where all the kids are not learning mm -hmm. but your dad will force you to learn that is one example but in that regard, if my, my dad was like any other parent and just left me to be on my own, I'll be like any other kid. The kids were all flourishing because we come together to learn. Now, when you get to a certain, a certain age, once you're going to school, you tend to adopt the culture in your school. Mm -hmm. Your friends, yeah. the kind of friends you mingle. Even as a child, you, you are able to even choose the kind of friends you want to mingle. Yeah. You, see, you can see a dull student mingling with a very brilliant student yeah. and you see adult students mingling with adult students yeah the two of them don't expect to end up getting the same academic results if each other uh, they are picking yeah. um lessons or they are being influenced yeah, I by mean, they're the, literally you, the you, same you understand kind of, yeah. you're in the same class but one is associating with someone who make him better hmm. the same way if you are a very brilliant student and you are not disciplined and you mingle with the other the other kids mm -hmm. who are not as good as yourself and are not willing to become good as yourself yeah. then you you see that you'll be decelerating okay now when you get to high school where you spend most of your time in school the friends that you choose yeah. you have let's say 70 percent control and the kind of person you want to become you have a, a large control because your parents are not there with you in school especially if you're in the boarding house yeah prep time your parents are not there to say when you go to prep land you can go to prep and discuss with yeah just talk um just do any other thing apart yeah, from learning prep time that was the time people were you know you, you talking sing? to their girlfriend yes <laughs> yes so when i was in senior high school yeah my friends were in the most brilliant mm. but we try as much as possible that if they won't learn i'll force them to learn and the times that I fall down to learn, they'll force me to learn. So we're kind of balancing it. Each yeah. Other, yeah. So I wouldn't say I want to be friends with only intelligent people. At least I have to make an impact in my friend's life. In as much as you want your environment to influence you, you should also be an influence to your environment. Yeah. You understand? Because you are part of another person's environment. So the exactly. person also expects you to be a positive impact. Yeah. Now, after 18 where you are done with high school where now you can find a job for yourself you can the rest i think 85 to 90 percent depends on you your parents can't force you to tow this line or do this though they might play a part in deciding their career but at a point in time they just give up do what makes you happy do what you want to do and yeah. they support you so you choose the kind of environment you want to live in you choose the kind of environment that what you want to shape your future with someone will decide to leave Alajo to go and stay in east legon someone will decide to leave um achimota to go and you you decide yeah you know what will help you if you associate yourself with bad guys you decide it hmm. and you know the consequences of it because you you see examples on tv you, you see you hear from other people right so nobody it's like at a certain age you're on your own and you can't blame anybody that oh let's say i grew up in ghana 
there are people who are in Ghana and they are succeeding. There are people who are in Ghana and they are not succeeding. Someone is very poor, but they tend to try and make connections. Someone will say, I want to share. Like, they, they force themselves on other people. Mm-hmm. You, you can't get everything coming your way. Yeah. So sometimes you have to force yourself to put yourself in a certain environment. <laughs> Yeah. Do, you, do you get what yeah, I mean? Yeah, completely, completely agree with you. The fact that you, you grew up in a slum doesn't mean that you stay in the slum for the rest of your life. You move from there. Some people leave the village and they come to the city. Yeah. They know the rich. They don't know anyone in the city. Because Sheldon was saying that he grew up in a very poor, like he, he grew up in a, a place where he had to work miles. He didn't get the things that he needed. He had to move from there, come to home, move from there, come to Accra. He didn't know anybody, but he, he struggled his way around. He forced to put himself where he wanted to see himself. Yeah. So if you have a vision, you know that this is where I want to go. I want to become a scientist. I don't sit among people who do entertainment. Mm. You understand? Yeah. It's available to you, but you have to for- probably it will be difficult associating with yourself with those kind of people, but force yourself to be there. All right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think I completely side with you on that about the fact that when you're growing up, the things are out of your control, mm. like obviously, but when you get to a certain point, you should be firm enough to identify where you want to steer your life towards. Yeah. Like you rightly said, I know people who have moved from one community to another. I know mm. parents who have deliberately said, you, this is my child. If you live here with us, your life will be ruined. Mm. So I want you to go stay with your aunt somewhere else. I want you to stay with your uncle somewhere else. Yeah. And these are things that are not out of your control. But mm. even then, when you get to a point where you feel like, okay, now I need to make decisions for myself and all that. You have to be deliberate about it. You have to make sure that you're making the right connections. Yeah. It's it's always not easy because moving out of your environment is like moving out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And people don't like to do that. Yeah. It, and it's one of the things that would hold you back majority of the time. Mm-hmm. So if you're able to break out of that quote unquote space, mm-hmm. like you already mentioned, if you want to be a scientist, you don't spend all of your time with mm-hmm. entertainment people. You'd want to associate yourself with an environment that would propel you to become what you are. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a scientist, you want to associate yourself mm-hmm. more with people who bear the same mm-hmm. vision or mm-hmm. who bear the same goal. This whole environment thing we're talking about, probably someone might be thinking, you know, too wild, but it's very close. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's your what, What's your it's environment? Your it's, yeah, your fr- it's you. We, we, you we, we, we define environment as the things you see around you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And some of the things are intangibles. They they do not have a bigger role, like yeah. the furniture in your home, the kind of house you live in. You you can live in a luxury apartment. It wouldn't influence your life in, in too much of a way. Mm. You understand? Yeah. yeah. You can... Like, there, there are things that don't really matter. But the things that matter are the people, the individuals, mm. and then the culture within the environment. Yeah how people go about their daily activities. Like I was talking about a place where everybody is a drunkard, everybody smokes, everybody does the, some of these social vices. Yeah, chances if, are. If you raise up. So there are a lot of people in the UK who wouldn't want to raise their kids in the US because of how they think the culture in US is. So they are aware that if I raise my child here, looking at how my child is very stubborn or like very hyperactive. If I raise my child in this kind of environment, it will Chances heighten. Are, yeah. You understand? So they 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 are conscious about the decisions they make. Someone who take so my my cousin mentioned to me that his he went to his child's school. Now we go to school. We don't speak in most Ghanaian schools. You don't speak vernacular. Like local, local, yeah, which is yeah, the local because we are language, trained yeah. in English, right? Mm-hmm. We learn in English. We have subjects where you are you learn your local dialects, but most, let, let's say, ninety percent of what we learn in school is in English. So they encourage that you speak more English in school, so you're able to communicate better and all that. Yeah, we do learn French as well. Now, my cousin went to pick his um, kids from school, and then the teacher was speaking vernacular. So he said, I'm not going to leave my kid in this school if a teacher who speaks vernacular, instead of, I've brought my child to school. If it's vernacular, I can teach my child at home. At home. But you're supposed to, because when they are, they are kids, they pick up things very easily. They learn languages so fast. You know, they, they pick up things that you you wouldn't even think about. They, they, they just grab it and it stays in their mind. So 
I've, I've bought them here. I'm paying a lot of money for you to see them English. And then you are speaking vernacular with them. I, I can't raise my... It's a waste of time. So he moved his boy from that school to a different school. Someone will say, why well, it doesn't make sense after all what isn't your local language. But at the end of the day, he wants an environment that it will influence his child to the pedestal he wants to see those kids. Yeah. Yeah. So making that decision, it's if he leaves him there, you're not the one going to feed the child if the, the child becomes a certain way that he doesn't want, mm -hmm. right? So he's made that conscious effort. I'll, I'll move him from here, put him in a different environment where I think he, he can flourish. Yeah. You can't move a fish from water and put the, the fish in kerosene or something. <laughs> yeah, and that expect is not, it to thrive. You exactly. understand? Yeah. Birds fly in the sky. There's a reason why God puts every creature in a certain environment, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to put yourself in that environment you see yourself in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, completely. I mean, I completely side with you in that. And it's very important that because the thing is, the environment you're in, and in this case, friends, family, wherever it is, give you some kind of cues onto the things that you want to do. Like yeah. you, you rightly talk about people drinking and all that. If, if you continually see that, then it begins to be, you know, imprinted in your brain mm -hmm. and then one day you'll be like okay yeah, let me give this a shot or one day let me you, let me let you, me try you, this you. when i was growing up um like like you you stated with your dad my, my dad was even more stricter with the results you have to produce mm -hmm. and all that if if you you did so there were subjects where i could be top of the class maybe let's say i've got like 90 or 92 i'll be top of the class but i won't be happy mm -hmm. because when i get home your dad is like, you, you should have, do you get yeah. it? My dad was always, always pushing and constantly wanted you to be at that level. Mm -hmm. So I remember during BC, I got a like grade eight. The previous, my previous two brothers got a like grade six. So it was like I had broken a family record or kind of, you know, something like that. And that kind of environment, here, although might be suffocating for some, but that is what constantly pushed me. And every time I was like, okay, my dad expects this of me. I'm going to beat it to that. Yeah. And then you you come along, you meet friends like yourself, like Everlasting, all of these people who are constantly trying to move up. So yeah. you've, you've got to move with them. And yeah. it's, it's important that we all identify that. Exactly. For, for someone like myself, um, if like with association, right, we discussed in our previous episodes that we had friends that we lost along the way. Mm. Sometimes it's effortless. There are people who hold on to bad habits, bad people, knowing they are ruining their lives, but mm. they don't have the courage to move out of that space or shake up those friends or those attachments. When I came to nursing school, most of the friends that I had are, are still my friends, mm. but I adopted some, some. more. There are people who came to me to become my friends without me even asking them to is because you see that being associated with this person is the is that that's that kind of the kind of bond i want or that is what will push me to the next step i want to go the same way sometimes we try to build some connections we try to make contact even for this podcast we try to make contact with people who are in the space who are going to influence us yeah we can't be we we are doing this podcast and then let's say we will be speaking to or we are seeking advice from people who know nothing about yeah the, this, how, how this, this space thing you works, understand yeah so you have to make that conscious effort at a certain stage when you are very young sometimes it's out of your control but getting to a certain age in life and a certain stage where you can make a lot of decisions for yourself you have to make that conscious effort for yourself and for your generation Absolutely. to move out of that environment that you think is very toxic that you wouldn't want to see your kids in. Mm. You don't want to see your kids associating with these people, but you yourself associate yourself with, with them. They are not going to become any better than yourself. If you, you, you don't think good about yourself, you don't expect your kids to become any better, yeah. right? So you do that and you can be like a form of advice to them. I was with these people and I moved here and it helped me in this way. Like we are trying to advise people on yeah. what helped us. Yeah. Yeah, my, my final words are that, um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you've said it all, you should be deliberate and mm -hmm. you should immediately recognize if you're on a certain trajectory and you are not so sure why things are going that way, mm -hmm. 
the first thing you need to look at is your immediate surrounding. Yeah. The answer to that problem mm. might just be in that. Yeah. And as soon as you identify that, work so hard at it, seek help, seek mm. support if you need to, associate with the right people, and you you break out of it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Great. So guys, thank you so much for joining us today. It's It's been a very exciting conversation. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe, and tell someone about FNF Catch Dialogue. So until we see you on the next episode, peace out.